Have you ever heard the saying, the only constant in life is change? It's true, change is inevitable, and technology advancements are a prime example of that, altering the face of the world and how we live in it. When setting up or expanding your network, even if you use the latest technology, there are some traditional methods to follow to keep a good handle on your network configuration. This includes documenting the topology of your network and strategically setting some static IP addresses where needed. The safest way to do this is manually. In general, networks are mainly configured with dynamic IP addresses given out by a dynamic host configuration protocol, DHCP server. However, if you need constant access to a device or server in the network, it would be beneficial for a specific IP address to stay the same. In this edition of Cisco Tech Talk, I'll go over some best practices for setting up static IP addresses. I'll start with a little more detail about IP addresses. Cisco Business Hardware uses private IP addresses for the local area network, LAN, by default. Out of the box, some equipment comes with a default IP address that you can use to access the web user interface. RV series routers come with an IP of 192.168.1.1. Cisco Business Switches, 192.168.1.254, and Cisco Business Wireless Access Points, 192.168.1.245. Once those devices are deployed in a DHCP network, they will be assigned IP addresses, usually chosen from the 192.168.1-0-24 IP pool of addresses. These are dynamic and can change over time within the DHCP pool addresses. You do have other options for private IP pools, including a 10.0.0.0-8 network or a 172.16.0.0-12 network when you configure the IP address statically. No matter what pool of addresses you configure for your network, make sure to document the topology and relevant details. Be sure to note all devices and static IP addresses you configure, along with the media access control, MAC address, of each device. This is the unique identification number of each piece of hardware. When adding static IP addresses, there are some important things to keep in mind. Make sure each IP address is unique. In a network, if two IP addresses are the same, those devices won't be able to communicate on the network. Duplications can happen in two ways. The first is if you assign the same static IP address to two devices. It seems unlikely, but it does happen. This can be prevented if you keep those detailed notes on the topology of your network that was mentioned earlier. The second way for duplications to happen is if you set a static IP address on one device and then DHCP assigns the same IP address to another device on the same network. This can be prevented by setting up one pool of addresses for DHCP to assign at random, and then a separate pool of addresses that is set aside for static IP addressing. That way they won't overlap. For example, create a pool from 192.168.1.50 to 192.168.1.99 for static IP addressing, and 192.168.1.100 to 192.168.1.149 for DHCP. When you assign a static IP address, there are certain addresses to avoid for preventing conflicts. First, don't use an IP address that ends in .255, since this is reserved for a broadcast address. In this example, that would be 192.168.1.255. Second, don't use an IP address that ends in .0 because those are normally reserved for networks. Third, don't use an address ending with .1 or .254 since these are common default device IP addresses. Not only that, but since the first and last available IP address are so common, hackers often try them first when trying to access your network. Last but not least, you should avoid using the same or even an overlapping LAN IP subnet while configuring a VPN between different sites. This would be a situation when you would want to change one of the LAN networks to one of the other options for private IP pools, a 10.0.0-8 network or a 172.16.0.0-12 network. 
All right, now that you know some best practices for static IP addressing, I'll log into some equipment to show you how to assign a static IP address on a Cisco business device. For this first example, I'll use a Cisco RB340 router. The first thing to do when you log into the RB340 web user interface is to open the LAN option and then choose VLAN settings. There's already an IP address assigned to VLAN 1. This screen provides options to add or edit a static IP address. To do this, select the Add icon or the Edit icon to edit an existing VLAN. In this case, you can edit the IP address shown here. So first, you need to select the checkbox on the same line as the IP address and then click the Edit icon here. Notice that when you click the Edit icon, all of the available fields that can be changed are shown. Here, you can edit the IP address under IPv4 or even select the subnet mask and choose a DHCP type. In this example, I'll enter 192.168.1.2. The DHCP pool will be populated automatically once you enable the DHCP server. You can change these if needed. Next, be sure to click on the Apply button to save the changes. The static IP address on the VLAN interface is set. This process is similar for a Cisco Business Access Point. I'll walk you through that process next. First, log into the Access Point user interface using your credentials. Navigate to Wireless Settings and select Access Points. Click on the Edit icon. Click Yes to continue. As you can see, the IP configuration type is set to Obtain from DHCP. From the drop-down menu, select Static IP. In this example, I added a static IP address of 192.168.1.3. Enter your preferred static IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway address, which is the router that connects to the internet. Click Apply to save the changes. To assign a static IP address on a Cisco business switch, log in. Navigate to the IPv4 configuration settings and select the IPv4 interface option. Click the plus icon to add an IP interface. Select a VLAN from the drop-down menu and then choose the IP address type as a static IP. After that, all you need to do is enter the IP address and the network mask. In this example, I added an IP address of 192.168.1.4 and a network mask of 255.255.255.0. The settings are finalized. Click the apply button to save your changes. Keep these best practices in mind when setting static IP addresses, because no matter what changes come your way, it's good to know how to keep some things the same. Well, at least in your network. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.